Hi everyone again uh, welcome to the Linux programming and scripting class um, we will be um, talking about Perl in today's lecture. Um, let us look at uh, what we covered in the last uh, lecture um, and then uh, we can start from there um, so let us quickly go through that. Um, so in the last lecture we had a lot of uh, things that we covered. A um, lot of the things were new uh, to uh, most of you. Um, one thing we went into like more details about uh, the pattern matching. Um, I think like I mean this is one of the uh, key things that you want to understand in uh, Perl. Um, then we also took um, um, uh, took um, we took a look into the Perl debugger, the various debugging commands that we went through. Um, and I think like I mean that's another thing. Like I mean, once you run into trouble with uh, any Perl programs, you can invoke the Perl debugger and then um, use the Perl debugger to actually debug your program. Um, that will be like very useful. Uh, and then we also looked at the functions, uh, some of the functions in, in more um, uh, in-depth uh, manner. Uh, one was grep. The grep is a function that is used to um, grep a particular word. Um, from um, a given array of words or given dictionary um, and um, um, actually like I mean grep is used uh, widely to um, um, compare two arrays and get the difference of the array or also um, uh, compare two arrays and give unique items or the the inverse of the differences essentially meaning um, or uh, the commonality between the two arrays that is uh, one thing and then also like the difference of the array um, as uh, as output and then these things can be used uh, by simply the function we looked at it basically how we can combine the hash um, uh, table concept or hash array concept um, and then use grep to actually grep from that um, the in the indices essentially. So that is one thing and then the sort actually here we um, also um, went into more details um, uh, here actually like I mean the la in the last class we used a new um, operator called the um, the steamboat operator essentially like um, this operator is used um, as a monitor to do the sorting. Uh, the regular sort is an alpha sort um, essentially so there is a lot of issues basically so when you have to have a numeric sort and also like when how do you do the um, um, numeric sort um, uh, and uh, ascending order and descending order how do you do all those things uh, we can achieve using the, the steamboat operator. One thing to note here is in Perl uh, the sort function is um, um, by using a quick sort algorithm. So um, essentially uh, um, as you know the quick sort algorithm basically like uh, just uh, starts with any one uh, variable any one um, element in the array and then it tries to sort the elements that are um, um, greater than that element after that element and then um, the elements that are less than that element before that element and then uh, once it basically like once it anchors that particular uh, element then it uh, passes these two lists and then again it continues the same way because it goes through. So typically we see that um, it has a complexity of um, n log n um, I think like I mean you will probably like get into all these details once um, as a real computer science at least to know here you want to make sure that uh, this complexity is in this log n uh, area and log n is kind of it is uh, very good uh, considering the sort um, if it is n squared that means that you are actually like going to the object in two times basically. So I think like I mean this is a much um, um, controlled um, behavior. Um, so uh, that is what we, we are using the sort so sort is fairly efficient so that is what uh, I want to say about that. Um, then we also looked at the file open file close uh, testing the files with various um, 
switches um, whether we can read it read a file write a file things like that um, and then also like in the same case for the directories too basically um, these test, in, tests can be done for the directories um, and then uh, how do we uh, open the file and uh, various uh, file handles things like that we talked about that and then we also uh, talked about the strict um, keyword um, essentially um, so this is to make sure that uh, Perl does not um, um, omit uh, any kind of warnings or any uh, um, uh, other errors um, that it encounters because Perl itself is a tolerant uh, program so um, even if you made a mistake but um, if it is syntactically and semantically correct it just lets those things go through. So I think um, strict is, is one keyword that we will be using basically it is the use uh, strict uh, we will see like more and more programs actually using this. Um, so initially like I mean if you are doing like simple programs you may not want to do this but once if you are doing any Perl um, programming development. Um, I'll strongly urge to use use strict uh, in your programs. So I think uh, this is pretty much like what we saw um, in the last um, um, the lecture. Uh, uh, I think like I mean the, the, we went into like a lot more details in more of these areas. Um, but today I want to uh, actually introduce two topics um, today one is there are some leftover items that I want to um, talk about uh, one of them is essentially like how do you run a program within a Perl code um, so there are some um, neat techniques for that and I will explain that um, and then uh, the, the big topic for today is um, some of the object oriented uh, features of Perl which is uh, actually prominent in the Perl 5 which is the fifth generation Perl and um, this is essentially uh, what is called the packages and, uh, essentially today we will talk about how do we, how do we use packages um, basically like I mean one thing that made uh, Perl a versatile uh, language of, uh, that exists today is uh, the ability to actually export and import modules from um, different sources. So we will see like I mean motivation behind um, that and then also like I mean how do we really do it um, in uh, when we talk about the packages. Um, so let me talk about the first ones essentially as I mentioned um, how do we run uh, programs inside Perl. So say like I mean you want to do um, an externally like I mean a CD into a directory or something like that um, inside of Perl how do you do that so we will see there are actually three ways of uh, executing commands within Perl the first one is uh, what we call as exec or exec the exec commands essentially it executes the command that you provide but it never returns. So this is the keyword the never returns um, it is like a written fun, uh, statement in a function if the command is not found the exec returns a false uh, it never returns true because if the command uh, is uh, found it never returns at all um, there is also no point in exec in returning to returning standard out standard error or exit status of this command. So some examples essentially like here C C foo or print standard error couldn't execute foo with um, dollar uh, bang. I think like I mean this one you already know about this. Basically this is the to print the error message number. So um, it gives the constant error, error message number for this particular error. Uh, the other way to run um, exec is um, just to enclose the whole statement. Um, within a, um, the curly braces um, and then um, essentially um, you can also um, if this returns 0 then it goes into the next statement which is uh, it will say that it is not uh, able to execute. So exec pretty much like uh, finishes a program so basically like you know, once you run the exec it basically it just comes out from that uh, program. 
so this is one method there are uh, places where this uh, gets used uh, so um, we will we'll talk about it uh, talk about some of the things but uh, it's uh, it's one of the useful commands the second one is uh, called system um, in system essentially like I mean once you specify the command it executes the command and then once the command finishes basically the pulse script is continued uh, and then uh, it goes through and the return value for system command is uh, the exit status of the command itself. So if you are doing a CD and the CD becomes successful and if it returns 1 the return value from system is also 1. But if that um, CD was not possible and it returns a 0 then uh, the system command also returns a 0. Again it is mildly useful but it is not really useful um, because as you know when we try to execute commands yeah we can execute command like CD for example is, uh, is to go the take the program uh, pointer to a different directory. Uh, but if something like I mean if uh, you are using an external sort um, or a find algorithm to find certain things how do you actually get those values and then process them further that is simply not possible with the system command. So uh, here the uh, example for using the system command is uh, command with arguments and they are within the double quotes inside the parentheses. And then uh, a better way is essentially like in closing command arg1, arg2, arg3 everything as its own uh, strings so that uh, it is actually better for the system to see it and then run it uh, run the system command. Now the third option that you have is uh, what is called a backtick and this is I think like I mean this is very prevalent one and then a lot of people use this um, and um, essentially uh, this is something that um, um, that is uh, you, you will be using in your programs as well. Uh, the difference between the backtick and the system is uh, it is like system where it executes a command. Uh, and the Perl script is continued after the command is finished just like um, the, yeah, the system command. But where the difference comes in is essentially the next uh, line here where contrary to the system the, the return value is standard out of the command. So if you do the backtick it is not the status but whatever goes into the standard out becomes the return value. Um, so um, here we can say like I mean in a scalar context um, dollar result is a command followed by arg1 arg2 uh, and then you notice the back pick here back pick here. Um, so this command gets executed and essentially like I mean um, whatever the commands return value is stored in as a card scalar into the dollar result and then if you want if you if the command actually returns a list then all you got to do is basically like I mean um, you can um, store it as an array uh, with result as the name and then execute the command in the backtick mode and then whatever comes up is stored as an array basically whatever the result of that command. So this is very useful when you are doing a sort uh, external sort for some for some reason and then actually um, using it and storing it into the result. So, so again uh, to recap on this one um, EXCC essentially like I mean it uh, basically it executes the command but it never returns so it is useful but it is not that useful. Uh, the system essentially like I mean this is the next best thing where system actually returns the, the exit status of the program of the command rather than actually um, any any other um, thing basically whether it is an output of the command or anything it does not produce that it only produces the exit status. So here if you want to use this um, you may have to store the values into a temporary file and then basically like again read it back into the into Perl and then you can use it. So like I mean uh, system command is typically used to generate like I mean uh, large amount of data. Uh, which will be used at some point of time later um, in the program. 
so uh, that is the system and then finally the backtick commands uh, the backtick commands essentially it's just like the system where it um, executes the command um, and the Perl script continues after the execution is finished uh, but the difference is that um, actually now you can pass on whatever the output of the particular command back to the program that initiates this call. So it can be passed to those those things, and then you can do further processing with that. So the backtick is like a very useful. Um, I'll say like I mean more often than not, we see the backtick commands uh, than the um, um, the system commands. So now that uh, we covered this um, let us see um, uh, the next one basically which is uh, how to write and use Perl modules again remember that uh, this is uh, basically this Perl 5 which is some people call as object oriented Perl um, but um, I, I think like I mean the key thing here is uh, essentially if you are developing programs how do we um, um, get it into another Perl program and how we can foster like a collaborative development of um, various Perl uh, systems. In fact today a um, lot of companies uh, whether it is hardware or software um, are using um, uh, Perl as a vehicle I mean uh, use are uh, doing Perl programming and the way that they do it is uh, collectively they are doing it and then uh, in order to make the system work we need uh, these uh, modules the concept of modules and how do we actually write and use them. So just uh, um, before that I wanted to introduce you one small function which is called the QW function uh, it is called quote word um, it is used to generate list of words uh, the QW actually extract words out of the string using um, embedded white space as the delimiter so this is important you can actually like um, change this delimiter to any other delimiters um, uh, that you can read up on that um, or this command particular command um, and then it returns uh, words as a list essentially. So um, and then it also one thing that uh, note to note uh, one thing to note is that it, it does not it happens at compile time. Um, so which means that the call to the WQ is replaced with the list itself before the code starts executing. So here one simple example is um, code word temp file tender it returns temp file and tender as two different values. Um, so now um, so this is important in the next section when we talk about uh, the modules. Um, because like I mean most of the modules we write it as um, um, functions and basically use the um, uh, code word function uh, a lot. So let us look at uh, first of all what is a module. So uh, the module is essentially a separate namespace in a separate file with related functions and variables. So there are uh, three things here one is a separate namespace another one is separate file and then there are um, related functions and variables. So uh, how do we do that we will see basically um, so what is a namespace the namespace provides a certain context to the function and variable. So um, essentially um, you can think of namespace as any kind of names itself so my hammer Mary's lamb Gulliver's travels Dutch cheese French bread your car so you can think of this as like this these pronouns here basically are um, um, various possessives uh, here basically these are all the the namespace that um, um, uh, that is basically like I mean um, that provides that context to the, these functions so if uh, so 
in in short essentially like i mean you can say like uh, two people writing sort function you can say like a is sort or b is sort so we will we will see more about the that context essentially so here one example i have like two engineers jack and tom um they both wrote a function to shuffle a sequence and you want to compare uh, the two functions they both call this function as shuffle now how do you distinguish between them so the the way to distinguish between them is to put the function in its own namespace so now we call the first one as uh, jacks or harms so there's a sub shuffle and this is harms implementation and then there's also a sub shuffle which is jacks implementation so um if you if you put basically uh, say like i mean this is the sequence that we need to do and then um, if you say like i mean shuffle seq this will not work because it doesn't know like i mean okay which function to use again same thing it, it does not work so we need to distinguish between this and this so how do we do that so again it's all the same basically like i mean the top one and then what which the sequence that we want to uh, shuffle is also the same only thing is like now we name the functions as shuffle harm and shuffle jack so you notice here that actually like now the names are different we add this additional um element to it yeah this is well and good but uh, what happens basically um, when we you know we have to somebody has to tell the others essentially like you know, like if um, say like jack is the one that is uh, that developed the shuffle second time now jack needs to at least harm needs to tell jack that hey jack i am using the name shuffle harm so you should use shuffle jack or everyone should have these kind of uh, name arbitrary this is kind of arbitrary you can see basically um so uh, to avoid this essentially um we use the package essentially so what we say is basically like we call we will uh, have the package as arm and then inside that we will still use the same name which is shuffle and then that is followed by the arm implementation and then uh, we will have jacks block uh, with a package called jack and then it also has the same thing the as a um, function which is uh, shuffle and then this is jack implementation so now we define these two things but how do we use them basically so the way to use it is like again like when the sequence is the same here we use harm as the package followed by this colon colon and then the function name here again the same thing for the jack it's basically jack colon colon and then the function name these two will work basically and then you will get like two different answers based on how each one implemented uh, these two functions so um um so this is the package that uh, we can see basically like i mean so the package is essentially like i mean something that is um, um used inside the same program so essentially like i mean so now now if uh, you want to compare these two uh, packages basically like you need to put these two packages copy from harm area and put it into your program uh, copy from jack area and the shuffle and then put it in your program and then uh, we need to um, uh, write the basically like then we can write the whole program to work with that again it's kind kind of cumbersome basically like i mean so one thing that we want to do is we don't want to even depend on harm or jack in order to develop our program so so for that we need we need to turn these packages into modules so to turn this into modules we save harms package as harm.pm and jack's package as jack.pm but one small change that we make we put this one colon i mean one semicolon 
as the last line of each of the form. So then, uh, so then they are packages. So then, uh, Harm can check in his module. Um, I mean, the, these packages are converted into modules now. The Harm can check in his uh, module, and then uh, Jack can set separately check in his module, and then they are somewhere basically. So, um, in order to use the these modules in our script, basically what we need to do is we need to use the keyword use. Followed by the package name. I think, like I mean, you already saw the use of uh, the keyword use essentially, like when you warnings use strict, these are all the various uh, ways that we were using this. Um, and then the, the name of the module file usually is the name of the package, basically, with the extension pm. So, um, essentially, like I mean, so we just say basically, like use. Um, and then use Jack in this case. So here we let's see like how we do it basically. So the harm dot pm itself, the way that we'll write is uh, we use the same use strict and use warning. We call it as a package harm, and then uh, we write the shuffle. And then you can see that uh, the one semicolon is there. Now, in the Perl script, the way that we can do it is basically use harm and use jack. These are all the package names essentially, because this, the file itself is stored with harm.pm. So, this is the um, um, packages. So, we kind of imported this packages uh, from these locations. Now, we give the same thing, and then uh, this is the same exact command that we saw. And then uh, this should produce the right expected results. So um, we can also um, export functions um, by the modules into the main uh, namespace. So here we um, basically, like I mean, we uh, use what is called an exporter. Um, and then uh, essentially like I mean, we specify you know using the code word the exporter into this array and then export is nothing and basically like uh, this is the another variable these are the two preset variables that we will see what they represent in the next sections. So the export OK functions have to be explicitly imported basically so um, essentially like I mean so. Uh, um, what this means is like I mean once we add this in in front of um, our programs essentially that becomes um, the uh, the modules of the um, the functions that uh, can be exported so uh, actually there is a e missing here uh, you can say basically so so we say basically like for um, the shuffle um function the export is okay for that particular uh, function and then that's how so that's what uh, we mean here basically like the functions have to be explicitly imported so here essentially like i mean again we use the same thing basically and then um, we say like uh, shuffle sequence and then um, we will say like jack shuffle sequence so See here that actually, like we don't need to specify harm anymore here. That the reason is basically like I mean, the, we cannot, uh, we don't need to put the arm harm because uh, this is something that um, is what is being exported from this function. So um, for the harm, actually, like we are using this, so um, basically, like it is directly exported into this main namespace. So you don't have to specifically assign a jack namespace for that particular shuffle. So wherever you call shuffle, it's assumed that it's basically coming from ARM. Okay. So the location of the Perl module is the other thing basically that. 
uh, we want to talk about um, essentially um, it's uh, essentially like I mean it's uh, specified in this uh, at inc array so um, once you have the Perl minus v which is the verbose option then you can actually like uh, print this uh, at inc to see uh, where the where Perl looks for modules um, um, in your path so and then uh, you can also add this path with the Perl 5 lib in run and variable uh, which is use lib and then path to the libraries so now the question is like why we use modules so as I mentioned basically like there are um, um, there is one reason which is the sharing and the code development of uh, various um, programs but let us look at this essentially so the number one reason is essentially to organize the components of the program so what we can do is when we have like large programs we can, can develop um, some of the components as a bottom up approach uh, where we write the essential functions and then those functions can be stored in various uh, files and um, essentially like we can use an export mechanism or modules to export that into the main um, um, main program so this is one reason the second reason is the code reuse where um, we can use the same the once we write a particular sort function and if we know that that is the most efficient way of doing things we can use that over and over again in uh, other scripts and we do not have to develop this uh, at all we can use, reuse the code from one to the other and then the third uh, main uh, uh, motivation for using the modules is it is a convenient way to publish or share the code with others. So um, there are a lot of uh, modules and a wide range of functions are available for Perl. So this is one uh, uh, website that I want you to go and check for the various modules uh, in Perl. So um, some more details on the modules. Modules are an important and powerful part of uh, Perl programming language. Uh, the module is a named container for a group of variables and subroutines. Which can be loaded into your program by naming this collection of uh, behaviors and storing it outside the main program. You are able to refer back to them for uh, from multiple programs and solve program uh, solve prob problems in manageable chunks. As I said, this is essentially like promoting the reuse uh, mechanism. Uh, the modular programs are easily tested and maintained because you can actually um, test just the modules and maintain them and you can avoid repeating the code and then um, the the main main reason why we can avoid repeating the code is also because we need to change any kind of um, bugs in only one place and then all the others automatically get um, changed and then uh, Perl modules can may also contain documentation they can be used by multiple programmers without each programmer needing to read all the code. So um, essentially um, it promotes uh, multi user and uh, multiple uh, people to work on uh, programs simultaneously and it also promotes uh, developing a big environment which uh, does several things uh, collection of uh, tools and techniques basically for solving a given problem um, and it can be generated um, uh, by that. Um, and then uh, the mod modules are foundation of the CPAN, which contains thousands of ready to use modules, many of which you will likely use on a regular basis. So, with Perl installation, the CPAN modules also will come, and then uh, you can use them for uh, yeah, your programming purposes. So, uh, I want you to take a look at the CPAN, uh, the website is given in uh, the previous one. So now let us look at uh, what is CPAN. Um, so before that, like I mean, yeah, as I mentioned, the Perl modules they are set of related functions and in a library file. Um, they are specifically designed to be reusable by other modules and programs. Currently, there are about 108,000 modules that are readily available for your use. So, what is CPAN? 
CPAN is this particular uh, thing basically it is a comprehensive Perl archive network I want you to go and like look for it uh, because the CPAN uh, uh, function CPAN modules are widely used and pretty much it comes with every Perl installation and uh, in your installation if you have this thing. And um, one thing to also notice uh, most Perl modules are written in Perl but some use um, access and they are they require uh, C compiler. Um, modules may also have dependencies on other modules um, almost always on CPAN uh, and cannot be installed without them. So, or we need to also without a specific version we cannot install. So, uh, and then the CPAN itself uh, um, in, the, in the modules in CPAN they require uh, a region mode of Perl which is uh, Perl 5.8 or well. So, this is another location essentially like uh, metacpan.org meta uh, where you can um, search the 108,000 modules I mentioned uh, on CPAN. So think of these modules as now um, your um, apps only thing is like um, these apps are actually connected to each other so that I mean when you can write a super app by just meshing these apps um, into that um, super app. So um, essentially like I mean the, and then so this um, CPAN you can think of it as the iTunes for uh, Perl. And that has about 108 modules ready, 108,000 modules ready for you to develop uh, the new apps. Um, so I think, like I mean, this gives you like a good overview. Um, essentially, um, now we will look at um, the um, uh, one code segment. Basically, like I have one today. Uh, here essentially like I mean we are trying to list the contents of a directory. So the first statement you know basically like you could infer use strict use warnings. So here we are actually now um, exporting a module essentially um, called path and then basically like which contains the package class. Um, so here essentially like I mean uh, again we are, um, we are defining the directory basically so um, it is foo bar essentially that goes by uh, foo slash bar you can have like uh, many much many many more and then they are all like uh, we are opening it as a directory we are calling it as a directory. And now we want to uh, iterate over the contents of the, the foo slash bar. Um, basically we are saying here this particular scalar variable is um, dollar dir next essentially um, um, the next file um, first we see basically like if it is a directory then we will skip basically. So uh, we do a is the um, test essentially on this particular um, uh, file. And essentially, uh, we just uh, break the loop and then go to the next one if uh, it is uh, if the test becomes true. If the test test is not true, then what we do is we basically we print that particular line into the um, uh, as a string and with the um, uh, new line character. So. Um, the stringify is another um, uh, function that is um, specified in the in this one basically which uh, essentially like takes this uh, contents of the file which is um, the full slash bars uh, first first one and then it it, it uh, um, creates a string out of the whole uh, characters and then it prints out that particular uh, string. So I think like I mean this is a very simple program as you can see like I mean um, so this is you can think of this as the ls command essentially so ls and uh, directory name uh, you get or ls foo you get uh, this this particular uh, Perl command you can see that one two three four five 
six, seven, eight, nine. Within less than ten lines, you can actually make this command work. So this is how powerful you can see the programs, and then how powerful it can get. Um, so I think. Um, let me just uh, recap uh, this whole session basically for you. Um, so we started by uh, talking about how to execute uh, commands inside of Perl um, using the three uh, main uh, methods. One is the EXEC, which is not very useful because it executes a command and it comes off. Um, so you can put it as a like last command if you want to send an email or something. You can execute the email command and then this come out of something like that. Uh, then we also looked at uh, system. The system command system uh, specification is essentially it uh, executes the command, but it continues from where it is uh, where it left off, and um, until the Perl script itself is finished. Um, but the um, return code is actually the exit status of the command. It's nothing. It's not the output of the command, but just the exit status of the command is true or false. So you have to use it with a pinch of salt here. Basically, um, if you don't want any output coming from the uh, the particular command to be further processed, then you can use a system call. Okay. Uh, and then finally, the backtick essentially is. Um, uh, Essentially, like a backtick is um, the way that uh, we can actually capture the results or capture the output of a particular command into various variables, and this can be used within the in the, the Perl script itself. So there are a couple of examples that we quoted here. Uh, you can think of this basically like you can have it in a scalar context or an uh, list or an array context. So um, these things uh, you can do. Then uh, the next one that we talked about was uh, how to write and use the Perl modules. Uh, this is uh, one of the advanced topics, essentially, like I mean, this is also known as the object oriented Perl or Perl 5. Uh, one of the function that uh, we talked about, which is key to um, all these things, is the QV, QW or the quote word, uh, and this is used to extract words out of the string. Um, and using the embedded white space as the delimiter, and it uh, returns the words as lists. Um, so a simple command is shown here, essentially. Um, and so then we went into the packages and the modules. Essentially, the modules essentially is the separate namespace and a separate file with related functions and uh, variables. So we wanted to understand what the namespace is. And the namespace is uh, something that provides uh, a context to the functions and variables. So if um, you can distinguish between A's uh, sort function and B's sort function. And then we explain the, the namespace um, with an example essentially like where uh, we have two, two individuals Jack and Harm who are trying to develop the same program called Shuffle. And how do we distinguish between them? So if you just put the function name uh, with the, the those two implementation as uh, functions, that does not work. So one way to do, um, do um, uh, come up with a solution is basically embed their names into the function. So it is shuffle harm and uh, shuffle jack. Um, yeah, we can do this, but uh, this is again cumbersome and basically it will be all um, the it is a very subjective uh, so we cannot uh, really implement this. So uh, in order to find a happy medium what we said was basically we introduced the concept of a package um, where um, we start the harm block with what is called a package uh, specification or a package keyword and then uh, harm. And then we write a shuffle, and then uh, for the jacks, basically jack also starts the same way: package jack, and then the the, the his shuffle. And then once we use it, basically we just say harm colon colon and jack colon colon. So um, 
this is this is the way how we can uh, um, uh, import those packages into our program and then move them. Um, so, but the package can be turned into modules by just uh, using the one uh, followed by a semicolon at the end of uh, the program or the last line of the program should have this. And then if you want to use the package in the script we use uh, the keyword use followed by the package name and then we do not have to specify the extension uh, PM here. So here um, basically uh, how we use it um, we do the define the harm dot PM with uh, one semicolon and then uh, we use it uh, inside the thing basically uh, this harm. We give like this keyword use harm to make sure that uh, this package is uh, exported. So another way to do it is essentially like I mean uh, you can actually export it into. Um, so this is a simple export essentially like I mean use harm and jack, um, but you can also give it. Uh, um, a main context essentially or we can export into the main works uh, namespace so that uh, we can avoid every time typing these uh, some name followed by column column and it will have a name uh, in the main con uh, in the mains uh, context to do that we use an exporter um, so we specify use exporter and then we basically like uh, specify these commands um, and essentially the we say that export OK is shuffle and this actually gives um, the um, um, the the command actually like I mean how to do it so um, the we say basically use harm and then uh, again the we with uh, the shuffles um, um, as the subroutine essentially like so once we say that this is the subroutine at uh, with this package that one we do not have to specify um, the harm anymore basically because it is uh, it is also matches the export ok and then we continue with that uh, uh, process. Then we talked about the locations essentially like on um, how to look at the libraries um, and then we talked about uh, the why we use modules again the three reasons that uh, we outline are one is to organize the components of uh, your own module your own programs then to promote the code reuse where you develop once and share it and then use it many times and then sharing uh, the code with others essentially this is the key thing why how the collaborative design environment can be developed. And these are all like uh, the the functions are all available in cpan.org, which is an archive essentially. Uh, so the cpan itself stands for the Comprehensive Perl Archive Network, uh, and currently it has about 108,000 uh, modules. And um, one thing to note is like not all the modules are written in Perl. Some of them are written in the Excel, and they also require a compiler. And then um, we also want to note that um, the modules themselves basically call other modules um, and so essentially like we need to install the whole thing in order to get all the modules and then uh, the recent version of Perl is uh, that is another thing that we need uh, for accessing CPAN, uh, CPAN modules. So the Perl version has to be 5.8 or uh, above. Um, okay, so I think, uh, and then we went into this one example where um, we just wanted to list the uh, contents of a directory. This doesn't check other things or does not have uh, any other uh, things. Basically, this is kind of like it's an ls minus l, so it does not check um, whether there are any like dot files, things like that, or um, um, any other further checks on that. Only like directories it avoid. And it only prints the um, all the regular files. In the, in the, in the, so 
even ls minus l actually prints all the directories and everything this only prints all just the files so uh, i think uh, this is pretty much it for perl uh, from the next class onwards we will start the, the tickle uh, programming language um i hope this is this was enjoyable um, we will have some uh, quizzes coming up um, i think your ta will um, organize some of the quizzes and uh, tests for perl so thank you very much um, okay bye bye